we have been inundated with requests for more Homey Pro videos. So today I'm gonna to show you how I built my motion lighting in my living room using a Homey Pro Advanced Flow. And we're gonna build the whole thing from start to finish so you know exactly how it's done. It's gonna be a great tutorial and I've got a neat trick for you. So your lights won't turn all the way off if you're still in the room and the motion sensor stops detecting you being there. For this automation, I'll be using two Philips Hue white ambience bulbs, a Hue motion sensor, and a third reality motion sensor. If you're new to Homey Pro, advanced flows work using cards. There are when cards, which are your triggers, and cards, which are your conditions, and then cards that are your actions. These cards are then connected together with lines, so the logic flows the way you want it to. Now for today's motion rule, my living room lights, we're going to use a bunch of conditions or and cards, so the motion activated lights will turn on at different color temperatures and dim levels based on the time of day. Eventually, we're gonna wind up with a flow that looks like this. So we're gonna start here with a new advanced flow, totally blank canvas, I love how that works. So we gotta add our first card here, is our when card for our living room. And we're gonna say when the zone becomes active. This means that when any one of our motion sensors detects motion, it's gonna trigger something. The easiest thing to do here is turn on the lights. All the lights. That's right, so you draw a little line right there. Boom. Now that will obviously work, but we need to add some conditions in here to make it more useful. For starters, we only want the lights to turn on at night. So we need to add an and card from the date and time section and scroll down here to the it's daytime card. You'll see all of the and cards have these two little boops on the right side that you can connect lines to. The top line is the path that the flow will take if the AND card statement is true, and the bottom line is the path that it will take if it's not true. In this case, we want the lights to turn on when it's not daytime, so we'll draw a line from the bottom boop to the light card. That's your basic flow there with a the little condition. Now we want to complicate that a little bit further because we want to specify the color temperature and the dim level for the lights to come on based on the time of day. So we're going to actually delete this card right here, and we're going to add cards for our lights. Going back to our living room here. Again, we got two lights here, our living room couch one. And so we're gonna set the temperature and we're gonna set the dim level. The color temperature here, it's based on a percentage scale. Uh, this is cooler, this is warmer. So 40% is kind of our baseline for where we wanna have our lights set at. And we're gonna dim these to 88%, which is a good for kind of that early evening when you want the lights to turn on. Right, and we're gonna do the same thing for other bulb. I'll do that quick here. All right, so there we go. So those are set to match. And then if we want this to happen when it's not daytime, we draw lines from the bottom book right here. Now, if you wanna make this just a little bit easier, there's an app you can download called the Better Lighting app. If you have the Better Lighting app, you can set the color temperature and dim level in one card. So that'd be done like this. So we'd set the color temperature at 40% and then we select our light here which is the living room and then that's gonna be at 88% we said and then I can just copy this I can duplicate that and I can just change this to living room couch number two and then we're all set with that so actually I can delete these and these two cards do the exact same thing now we can add more conditions so we're gonna add some more and cards we're gonna specify the time so we're gonna say when the time is between so if it's not daytime, meaning the sun has set and the time is between four o'clock and nine o'clock, we want a certain lighting condition. And then if it's nine o'clock to 1.20 a.m., we'll just duplicate that again. Just change these times. If it's nine o'clock to 1.20 a.m., I'm a bit of a night owl sometimes. And then if it's between 1.20 and five, we'll duplicate that again. We'll have different conditions between, between 1.20 and 5.50 a.m. I don't know why you'd be up at the time, but you really don't want the lights blaring on you, so we have the really dim lights. And then my wife gets up early for work, so if it's between 5.50 and 10.50, then our lights are gonna come on at yet another level. So what we're gonna do here is delete these right here, and we're just gonna have our flow go through this checklist, essentially. So if it's not daytime, it's gonna say, okay, is it between four o'clock and nine o'clock? If yes, these are the lights we want to set for. If it's not, we're gonna have it go down to here and check is it between nine o'clock and 1.20 a.m. And now we wanna have different lighting conditions for that. So we're gonna just copy these and then we're gonna paste them right here. And now we can set these for what we want between nine o'clock and 1.20 a.m. 
This process of copying and pasting and adjusting the settings is the same for all these lighting periods. So we're gonna fast forward through that. It's gonna look like this. But once that is set, the next step is to automate the lights to turn them off. The first thing we need is a when card. So when the zone is inactive for let's say six minutes, uh, we want the lights to turn off. So we can select this then turn off the light cards right here. Now that'll work fine, but if you're sitting still in the room and the motion sensor thinks you're not there, I wanna show you a neat little trick to dim the lights for a minute to give you a chance to wave your hand and trigger the motion sensor again before you're stuck in the dark. To do that, we're gonna use what's called a countdown timer. But what we're gonna do first is after the zone has been inactive for six minutes, we are gonna dim these lights right here. So we're gonna add a then card using our better lights we're dimming the living room zone to 40% there, all right? So when that happens, you're gonna get a chance to wave your hands again to trigger the lights to turn back on, or eventually it's going to turn off. Now to do that, we need to use what I, like I said, a countdown timer. So we'll create a then card, go to the countdown app and select start countdown timer. We'll name this timer living room motion lights and set it for 33 seconds. We'll make a little room here. I love how easy things are to move around here in the in these flows. So, okay. All right, so we want the lights to turn off when the countdown timer expires. But we also wanna stop the timer to prevent those lights from turning off if motion is detected again during those 33 seconds. So first we need to add another when card. So when the timer reaches zero, select our living room motion timer right there. Now we add a then card, then turn the living room lights off. So that'll work great. Now we just need to add a then card up here. So when the zone becomes active, then stop the countdown timer so the lights don't turn off. Easy peasy. Now we have ourselves a pretty robust motion lighting flow. We could definitely call it good, but I want to finesse it just a little bit more. Because let's say we're in the living room during the day so the zone is active but the lights aren't on. Then while we're in there, the sun goes down. We want those lights to turn on in that situation too. Well, that calls for another when card. So when the sun sets and the zone is active, we'll connect those two then add another line to these AND cards. So when the sun sets, it will check if there's activity in the zone. If there is, it will flow here and turn the lights on appropriately. If not, they'll stay off. I also want the lights to dim and change color temperature at nine o'clock if someone's in the room. All that requires is one more trigger. So when it is nine o'clock, it will check if the zone is active, then work its way down this flow to set the lights at the correct settings. Now we're really cooking, but there's one more situation I want to account for. If it is daytime, but it's gloomy and dark, we want the lights to turn on when we walk into the room. Fortunately, my Hue motion sensor has an illuminance sensor to detect how bright the room is. So we can use this as a condition. This is not the most intuitive thing, but to do this, we'll add an AND card that is a logic card. Select this number is less than number card. Now, if we click here, we can see all the variables that our devices are sending to the hub. You'll see my living room motion sends battery, luminance, and temp data. So I will select luminance here, now in the number, we're gonna set it to 140. That's 140 luminance. If you have an illuminance sensor, the ideal number for you may vary. It just depends on location, sensor, all that. It's trial and error, basically. But now we can connect a line for if the zone is active and it is daytime to the new AND card. So if the zone is active and it's daytime and illuminance is lower than this, we wanna create another new light setting for this. Again, just copy paste and adjust the settings. We connect the lines and we're done. So lastly, and I promise this is it for this rule, we're gonna add a button to give us a way to manually turn the lights on and off. I can do an entire video on button controls, especially using Lutron Picos, they're awesome. But for this, we're gonna just create a when card for when the on button is pressed and connect that to our then card to turn on the lights. And finally, a when card for when the off button is pressed and connect it to the turn all lights off card. And there it is, our motion lighting flow in all of its glory. I hope you found that helpful. I love Homey Pro Flows, and if you want to learn more about what I love about them, check out this video right here. Thanks for watching.